Thank you. Todd Barclay. Thank you, Mr Chair. Um, it's a privilege to speak on uh, the New Zealand Public Health and Disability Southern DHB Election Bill and the Committee of the Whole House stage. Before I start, I just want to acknowledge the Minister, the Honourable Dr Jonathan Coleman, uh, the Select Committee Chair, Simon O'Connor, and the Commissioners, Cathy Grant, Richard Thomas, Graham Crombie. Um, I don't think for one minute we can underestimate the level of public service and high public scrutiny that these people have undertaken in their role as, as commissioners and deputy commissioners. Four. I think what they've done actually is a service to, um, to Southland and to Otago. And what they've, what, the task that they've taken on board is to basically turn around a systemically dysfunctional $852 million organisation supporting uh, a couple of hundred thousand people across a landmass the size, as Mr uh, Clark's pointed out, the size of Belgium. Um, and it is no easy task, and I want to acknowledge the support that they, they give to us as local members of parliament, um, and I suspect they provide the same level of support to opposition MPs, and to uh, the members of the community who uh, have basically vested a lot of, um, of support and hope in the ability for these three people to turn around an organisation that we all rely so much on, Mr Speaker. And I think at the heart of this bill extends the term of office of those commissioners. And I think by appointing those people to undertake this task, we would be doing them and our region an incredible disservice if we were to say, after only about a year, 18 months in the role, right, that's it, time's up, you now have to come to us with your proposals. This is a, a complex, incredibly complex area. And I've participated in a number of public meetings where the commissioners, the chief executive, um, and members of the DHB themselves have fronted up in full force to listen to the concerns of members of the public, to concerns of um, professionals working in the health sector in the district and to other stakeholders and key interest groups and to really get their handle on what the issues are and to um, start forming some views around how we can improve the healthcare service in our area. I just want to reiterate, I think this is clearly a long-term piece of work um, with a long-term goal of financial stability and sustainability. We've got an organisation that was in $42 million deficit, which has now been revised down for this financial year to $35 million, and that's been agreed to with the Ministry of Health. And I just want to... Um, I don't think that we can take the, those figures lightly um, for, uh, for an, a sector whose uh, overall deficit is only to the level of about $60 million. If two-thirds of that value is taken up out of one DHB, it really demonstrates uh, the need to reform and to uh, focus on how we can um, improve the healthcare service in this area, Mr. Speaker, uh, Mr. Chair. Sorry. Uh, and I think one of, the, one of the main reasons for this is uh, the opposition have said that the uh, health sector, well, particularly Southern DHBs, and underfunded. I would, I would have to disagree with that. Over the last six years, Southern DHBs funding has increased by $136 million. We've got more staff, we've got 66 more doctors, 195 more nurses compared to 2008. This is not a case of an underfunded uh, DHB. It's a case of systemic uh, financial mismanagement. And I think um, one of the things that I want to acknowledge the commissioners and their team on, Mr Speaker, is their level of public um, transparency and um, willingness to, to up, uh, you know, front up to the public around these issues. This is a phase of recalibration of stock take. There's not much to tell at this point in time. These guys are going around, listening to people, trying to find what the issues are and where things need to change and for the better, Mr Speaker. Um, Health care needs in our district have changed. We've got an increased ageing population, we've got increased ethnic diversity, uh, increased in, in young families in certain parts of our electorate. We've got parts of my electorate, Gore, heavily, uh, highly ageing population, Gore, Winton, Lawrence, Balclutha, and then we've got other parts of the electorate, such as Queenstown, who have got an influx of young families, um, ethnic diverse people coming into the area. And the DHB has to challenge, uh, uh, grapple with all those challenges, and I want to acknowledge again the support that the commissioners are putting into this area in this space. And for, for the opposition to say that uh, there's a lack of transparency and a lack of accountability to the public, I'd have to disagree with. While they might legally be accountable to the Minister of Health, they are ethically, morally and practically accountable to the public. 
both uh, all Kathy, Richard and Graham all live, work and have families in the southern DHB catchment area. Just because a nine to five job as a commissioner means that they can focus and report to the minister doesn't mean to say that when they go out to the grocery, uh, get their groceries, or when they go out to, for dinner, whether they go out to a coffee with a friend, they're accountable to members of the public all the time, every single day. I think that the settings are right with the, the legal accountability to uh, Mr Chair. Todd Barclay. To, to be placed with the government, which shows um, from my perspective and from my constituents' perspective that the government is paying a strong interest in uh, the, uh, the, uh, getting some better outcomes for Southern DHB. And I want to acknowledge that the interest that the Minister is paying in this area. Um, he's been down since becoming Minister uh, probably four to five times um, to the area and he's met with most of our hospitals down there, which shows uh, a genuine desire to put things right um, and to, to recalibrate the health system for the better for Otago and Southland. Uh, Mr Speaker. This is not uh, an inherent problem with the elected members, to touch on a point that Mr Haig has talked about. Um, I don't think for one minute that we're, we're suggesting that there's an inherent issue with elected representatives on D DHBs or any other public organisations for that matter. I think it's a, a case of a systemic problem with a complex institution. And I don't claim for one minute to, to be an expert in the health area or the health governance area. And I know that Mr Haig has had experience working in that area himself. But what I can say is um, the, the views that I've had from my uh, constituents is that the government, they are, they are pleased with the approach the government's taking by putting in commissioners. They're pleased with the level of public engagement. They're hungry for that engagement. And they're uh, appreciative of the ongoing engagement that they've got with uh, with the commissioners and, her, and their team. And I think as a parliament, instead of criticising uh, the work of the commissioners and under, underplaying the level of uh, complexity uh, of the role that we've asked them to undertake, we could actually get behind them and support them, um, support the, an extension of their duration in that role and get right behind them and ensure we get the best result for people of Otago and Southland. Thank you, Mr Chair. Very good speech.